In the last video I made for this channel, I talked about changing this channel over to speaker builds and audio related projects. And that's taken place. You can see the new logo that I came up with. This is actually a design recommendation from someone. I set up a kind of a contest in that video and he won that. I didn't get a winner for the name. Nobody gave me anything that really knocked my socks off. So I just went with what I currently have. Um, but I'm moving forward with what I'm doing here, but I want to point out one thing, and that's that the major builds won't be happening on this channel. Instead, I want to stick with the more technical aspects of doing this, at least from my understanding, because I'm going to say up front, and I've said this before, I'm not an expert on this. I'm still learning, and I'm actually relearning some of the stuff that I knew from years ago. So in this first video, this is actually one that I recorded and I posted on my Scrap Bin channel, and it's on measuring the frequency response of my office speakers. Those are the ones that I'm working on right now. I'm redesigning the crossover. I'm refinishing the boxes. I replaced the tweeter. So a big upgrade that will be all wrapped up in a single video that's coming up on this channel. But in the meantime, I wanna move those videos over here, edit them a little bit to tighten them up so that they'll all be in one place and they'll be easy to find. I set this up last night and I was monkeying around with it because a little bit of a steep learning curve with this stuff, but I did all this stuff before and I was using another program for it way back. I think it was Arda, might have been Arda. Um, I don't know, I can't remember if Speaker Workshop had that functionality in it, but whatever it was, it wasn't this software, but this software is really good and it's free, okay? Microphone's not free, but they're not expensive either. So Office Speaker, well, it was something that I needed. It was it was an itch that I wanted to scratch. I was in the mood to build a speaker, but it was more or less a woodworking project. So I didn't put any real emphasis on the speaker design too much. I made the like the box the, the right size for the woofer, of course, uh, but this, the tweeter here was, was the issue. It's the only one that I really had uh, that I could use without buying something. I was just relying on what I had, okay? I had the woofer, I don't know, 15 years or something, the woofers. They're good woofers, don't get me wrong. The tweeters were the issue. First of all, they were beat up, so I made new face plates for them right here, which are aluminum. Uh, the other thing is that they're way more sensitive than the woofer. Sensitivity is, of course, output. They have a higher, much higher output than the woofer. And I thought that that wouldn't be a problem or that much of a problem because when I first uh, got them finished, they sounded not too bad. But then about a month after, they started wearing me out. So I made an L pad, it's called. It drops the sensitivity of the woofer, not the woofer, the tweeter down closer to where the woofer is. I think I dropped it something like five decibels. So that got it down to where at least it was sounding reasonable, okay? But I, I knew there were still some issues with the tweeter because it didn't sound right. Anyway, so the, the crossover, the crossover was the big one because I made the crossover by taking inductors that I already had, bigger ones, and unwinding them and rewinding them and using weight as the measure to do the uh, actual calculations on it. The way to design a proper crossover for a speaker is to take the uh, both of the drivers and put in and then do measurements, and then you can take that and you can design the crossover. You can't, like, you can't design a crossover based on the published specifications of the driver. They don't measure the driver that way. What they do is they take the, say, the woofer, they put it in a big infinite baffle. That's the way they measure it there. So it gives a more accurate representation of what the whole frequency response is without, like, baffle step losses and stuff like that. I'm going to run the thing and then we'll go through the results afterwards. I just went through a whole routine where I tried to explain everything as I was doing it and it just didn't play out. It would have taken an hour. Okay, so basically I'm standing over here out of the way, I hope, and uh, I can start the recording. What this does is it produces a sweep. Okay, so the results are in. This first thing that you're looking at is that first measurement that I took. It looks pretty rough. So what you're seeing on the top is the frequency response. That kind of 
waving line in the middle is the calibration file for my microphone and below that is phase for the thing which is complex what you can do to clean that up is add smoothing which i did here so that makes it and i also got rid of the phase and the calibration thing so it's just showing the frequency response of the speaker but you can see a lot of mess down on the bottom down there that's room reflection happening and to get that out of there what we can do is limit how much it actually measures like measure just the part before that first reflection and this next one shows the impulse response and you can see that big thing in the front and then there's some squiggles further on and those squiggles are reflections so what you do is you you window that out you you uh you just take the data from the impulse forward till those things start and it's called a gated response and so that shows on this next picture and what that gives you is the true response of the speaker from a, around 300 hertz up 350 maybe 400 the stuff below that is not reliable because it's been gated out but it does show you everything above and what i can see here is that the tweeter is still not looking very good there are a couple of really big peaks there i could redesign the crossover to cut these uh, peaks down or i could drop the overall uh, response of the um, tweeter some more to try to bring them down that way but i still wind up with a dip the thing about the tweeter is it, apparently it's not a very good one so <laughs> you know but it sounds okay and my like i said my my hearing's kind of shot now there is another way there's a an equalizer that works with windows called uh equalizer apo or something and you download that and you set it up with um filters that can actually uh level out this response more you know they'll cut those peaks if you set it up properly and that'll make it better after that i did a and i'm trying to find it here this thing is not doing it properly i also did off axis um horizontal and vertical and you know this is the combined picture on that i took i think six measurements maybe two four more measurements actually and you can see it's fairly typical the distance between this the drivers on the front here is not optimal I went more for looks there and knowing that I was using them in my office I'll be close to them so the the actual distance between like it's still acceptable is the width of the woofer you know that's the distance like the ma the the maximum distance that the center of the tweeter can be or the centers can be I think anyway is it it's close anyway it's close but it, like I said, it's not ideal. I was going more for looks and I really wasn't thinking about it at the time. Like I said, I was doing all this stuff before and I knew all this stuff and I kind of forgot it. Anyway, so the off axis response doesn't look too bad. The big thing is the peaking response in the tweeter. If that can be brought down, the woofer looks really good. I also brought the mic in close for a near field measurement. And I think that's the next one, if I can find the button to press yeah that's that's this one you see here the blue line is the near field for the woofer so that gives the true bass response okay it starts rolling off around 100 hertz okay which is expected there's a sealed box it's not a ported box that's a fairly small woofer i'm using these in my office basically for editing video so i don't need real deep bass or anything so that's perfectly acceptable